Live from Chicago, Illinois, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam On 2018. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to day two of Veeam On 2018 in Chicago. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm here with Stu Miniman. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Dante Orsini is here. He's the Senior Vice President of BizDev at iLand, CUBE alum, good friend of theCUBE, great to see you great again. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. So what's happening with iLand these days in the world of cloud service providers? Well, Dave, it's been insane for us. I mean, obviously Veeam's a huge partner of ours. We've been working together for what, seven years now, I think. Mm. Um, and it's just amazing to see the growth of this company, right? I mean, we've integrated yeah. Veeam, our relationship, you know, we started off basically providing managed backup many, many moons ago, right? But Six years ago, we started to build our own platform on top of VMware, on top of Cisco, on top of HPE. And customers really wanted to see more control, right? They wanted greater levels of security. They really wanted a true enterprise cloud, right? So to do that, we had to enhance the VMware stack. And we had chose to basically take Veeam and integrate them via their API. So today, if somebody deploys anything in the world with iLand, it's automatically backed up by Veeam. Right, so if you fast forward a bit, as you see what Veeam's done to innovate with cloud and multi-cloud, they've really helped build our business, right? So Dante, if you go and look back, kind of before the whole cloud wave, uh, uh, the typical service provider, mm -hmm. they would have one of everything. You'd yeah. walk down the aisles and there'd be, you know, whatever it was, mm -hmm. a, an EMC box, a, a digital box, whatever right. it was. <coughs> Did virtualization change that? Were you able to consolidate, create a platform, uh, create a, you know, a simpler environment to manage, or is it still a lot of bespoke infrastructure lying around? Yeah, it's a great question. So you know, for us, I'd love to tell you we, we hit it the right the first time, you know, 12 years ago, but no. You know, just like you said, there's all sorts of different technologies, right? Um, but I think what we've done is we quickly standardized, right? So we leveraged Cisco UCS from a compute perspective. Uh, we leveraged some of their storage platforms uh, for things that we do with Veeam Cloud Connect Backup. Um, we actually helped them drive the validation of that product before it came to market. So we operate at scale with them. Um, same thing with Veeam. So we're their, the largest cloud provider in the world right now um, as far as leveraging Veeam technologies. Now, in addition to that, on the storage front, um, we also, because of the demands of the environment, right, we really want to deliver a secure cloud service. So, you know, encryption is table stakes and has been for years, yeah, right? So great. HPE, Nimble, plays a critical role for us there. So <clears throat> that's really our stack. Um, <coughs> Cisco from a network and a compute perspective, VMware at the hypervisor, right? Um, and HPE from a storage perspective. So it sounds like you've taken some very cost effective platforms, Nimble, Veeam, you know, et cetera, and then architected an enterprise class solution. So you guys are adding value around that as, a, as an integrator and then obviously a service yeah. provider. Yep, correct. And I, I think you know, the, the market is demanding more and more from a cloud provider, right? Mm -hmm. People want true transparency, they want control over the infrastructure. Um, so for us, it's like how can we develop an API so we can make this platform extensible, right? And then still work with customers that are struggling with the promise of cloud, right? Um, and Stu, you, you see this all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. and, and Dante, one of the things we're, we're discussing here is it, it's, a, it's a very hybrid world. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, as, as Veeam said, we've got you know, customers are doing lots of SaaS, they're using service providers, they have their own data centers, they're using a few public clouds. One of the things I've been watching real closely is Companies like iLand and the other cloud service providers, Amazon and Microsoft, you know, aren't the enemy anymore. It's well, we actually have to partner with them on some services. We do some things locally. Could maybe, maybe give us your, your viewpoint as to how that's changed in the last couple of years. Yeah, great question. So I would tell you that we're not quite there yet, Stu. Yeah. And also from my perspective, yeah, yeah. right? So you guys know we're known best for delivering disaster recovery as a service. Um, that's where we've made a name in the space. But the irony is we've really focused on building this enterprise cloud infrastructure, right? So an IaaS platform. And ironically, that's a majority of our revenue, right? So when we look at public, clearly it is a hybrid world, right? So where we've spent a lot of time is investing in how can we highly automate the integration, right? Because we know that people are going to have workloads everywhere. So the idea is, think about it from a recovery perspective. If I'm protecting your traditional workloads and you've got a dev team that's using various different services that are proprietary to a public cloud, that stuff's got to talk to each other, right? In a true resiliency capacity, right? So <clears throat> we want to make sure that people could actually highly automate and orchestrate a failover to us, a test to us, but also integrate the connectivity portion of that, 
right? So making sure that all these things can talk together is important. Now, you understand as well as I do, as these cloud architectures change, become more modern, and they're more service driven, the traditional, I'm going to move from point A to point B is no longer in play, right? It's how can I have more diversity amongst my vendor base? So if I'm using you know, containers, I've got a globally distributed architecture, if I can deploy some of that with iLand, and some of that, and you know, maybe using Kubernetes, right? That gives me diversity for recovery. Oh yeah, Dante, you hit one of the key things we've been, as an industry, struggling with. That pace of change is just so rapid. How do you internally deal with that pace of change? As to I architect something today, and tomorrow there's something new. And tell us what you're hearing from your customers as to how they, you know, make their decisions and sort through the, this constant changing rubric. Yeah, well, it's definitely in, insane. But, you know, we see all sorts of various different use cases, right? Depending on the industry and, and that pressure to innovate right, at the speed of light is really people struggle with it, right? So I think from our perspective, there's a couple things that we're doing. One, we actually wrote our own assessment application. We call it iLand Catalyst. And this was really designed to help both our customers as well as our partners, because we go to market through a lot of partners as well, uh, to help streamline this pre-sales process for a customer. So again, we focus squarely on the VMware infrastructure stack, right? So being able to pull an inventory of what somebody has in their environment, and then go through and select resource pools and VMs for whatever the purpose, whether they're looking to lift and shift workloads, or whether they're looking to protect them from a backup or a DR perspective, and we're able to mitigate all the challenges associated with that. So to your point, as, pe as people are looking at cloud, it's like, okay, is this cloud thing real? And how's it apply to my business, right? What can I really do with this? And oh, oh by the way, I got to deal with my budget also, so what's this stuff cost? So we've got some really smart people, but you know you can't scale our smartest people globally, right? So we wanted to really drive that into an application, and it's it's really helped get people to outcomes much quicker. So Dante, right first. If, you, if you reverse back a few years ago, uh, VMware was calling Amazon a bookseller. Uh, yeah. Amazon was calling you know the guys like VMware the old guard, you know the old way. Yep. You know, they, they kissed and hugged last yeah. year. So, but that, you must have loved that, first of all, because yeah. it was like, great, right. VMware specialist, we'll just drive a truck through that opportunity because we get service provision, cloud, VMware stack, boom. Okay, now fast forward, they've got this little kumbaya thing going on. Mm -hmm. um, how do you now differentiate from that? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. So, first of all, I, you know, VMware obviously a very strategic partner. Sure. I think they've got a long road ahead of them, right, on some of the things that they're doing, right? And I, I think the promise of where they're going is great, but I still think that there's a lot of folks that struggle with the idea. I mean, think about commingling my traditional workloads and then trying to integrate cloud native services on top of it. I think it's a tall order, right? So we'll see where it goes. We're keeping a close eye on it. Um, but in the interim, for us, we continue to see folks that are saying, look, I want to get out of the data center business. I've built my data center on VMware and I need to have much greater levels of control and visibility and you need to make this easy on me, right? Um, so from that perspective, we've been able to, to do really, really well. We work with a lot of service providers that are looking for that level of consultative approach but also want to realize the benefits of a cloud, right? So the point being is I want a true cloud but it needs to be enterprise class and I also need to know that I, I might need help architecting you know, that migration. Right? Uh, all right. Well, that's the key, right? I mean, you're not going to get that from an Amazon. They're not going to come into your shop. They're not going to hold your hand through it. They're not going to help you build the architecture out and, and help you manage it on an right. ongoing basis, right? Yeah. Uh, Dante, it's May 2018, so I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about GDPR. <laughs> hey, Stu, I love you, man. This is great. So, you guys know we operate globally, right? And have for, you know, over a decade. So, GDPR, we were way out in front of this. So, I'm not sure if you follow, the, the BSI came out with a new standard. 10012, I believe. I think our compliance and DPO officer would be pretty proud of me remembering that one. But uh, I'm proud of you. It's, yeah. it's tailor made for GDPR, right? So we've been pre certified, one of four companies that did it. We do a ton in the security side and the compliance side. I know they go hand in hand. Um, we, were, we went through a global audit last year on the back of some of the ISO work we do um, with, the, with the CSA, the Cloud Security Alliance and actually came out with a gold star certification. Sounds juvenile, right? <laughs> gold star, woohoo, right? But uh, it's a big deal. Only Island and Microsoft have actually achieved that level of certification. Really? Yeah, so on the compliance side, we're way out in front of GDPR. Um, we're doing a lot from a thought leadership perspective um, in educating both our partners and the marketplace. Um, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Brexit also, right? And I think you'll see the rest of the world kind of find their way to their own type of regulation. So what do all those acronyms mean for your customers in terms of GDPR compliance? 
Yeah. How does that turn into value for them and make their life easier? Can you explain? So I think right now, the whole market's been kind of, in my opinion, has been ill-prepared for this. Uh -huh. And no so you see a lot of people scrambling, right? So being able to identify you know, what data is going to fall under that regulation, how you treat the data, how you're able to account for the data, um, and also destroy the data and validate that, is, I, I, frankly, I see some of the, the biggest sweeping change in marketing. I see marketing people really scrambling, right? Because they have to make sure that they double opt in. I mean, because the fines for breaching this are unbelievable, right? So I think you're going to see the regulators make an example out of certain people, yeah, right? No doubt. Quickly. And, and there's going to be some examples. They're going to go after the guys with, with deep pockets first. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fines are, I mean, what, what are the fines? Uh, Four, is it 10% of turnover? No, 4% of turnover. 4% of your previous year's turnover. Yeah, which is insane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's going to hurt. Yeah, or, or like something that. like 20 million pounds, something like that, whichever yeah, is greater. greater. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. It's pretty onerous, all right. Yeah. Dante, uh, VMON 2018, we'll give you, you know, closing thoughts. Fantastic event, right? Uh, just super appreciative for our relationship with Veeam. They've been behind us, they've been behind this whole cloud provider community. I mean, guys, you can know this, Ratmir and team had the ability to go take this stuff to a public cloud many moons ago. They chose to enable a, a managed cloud provider market first. Mm. So we are very grateful for that. Awesome. Hey, thanks so, so much for coming to theCUBE. Great to My see pleasure. you, as always. Yep. All right, keep go going, Yankees. everybody. Go oh, Yankees! Oh, whoa, time out. <laughs> go Yankees. Out. Okay, well, nice while we're on the topic, so Here we go. listen. You can't beat the Red Sox in April. Okay, yeah. you know that, right? Yeah, so, here we go. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, I have predicted the Yankees are going to take the East, and I think they go to the World Series, but uh, you got to be excited as a Yankees fan. Could be a good year. I, I've always liked Brian Cashman. I think he's one of the best GMs in the business, and I, th I watch his moves at the trading deadline. Mm -hmm. He's going to beef up the bullpen, and uh, I hope the Sox can, can hang tough with him, because anything can happen. That's true, anything can happen. All right, hey, great, great to see you. Great to see you guys, much. thank right, you. Go Sox. Take Keep it. right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. <laughs>